Part 2. Number 3. The Plot. So with all these complex elements left totally unexplained, George starts throwing the plot at us, which is basically the exact same plot as the last film. Palpatine is creating a crisis to get something that he wants. And again, nothing makes sense. It starts with an explosion. The blooms! Cause you know, a movie's gotta start with an explosion, or something that gets the plot going. I guess I was wrong. There was no danger at all. Guess you spoke too soon. I failed you, Senator. How did you fail her? Isn't that exactly what you were supposed to do as a decoy? I thought you took that explosion pretty well. Nice work. Fantastic death scene, too. And you managed not to get horribly burned at all. Wait, how did you die? So Count Dooku is rallying star systems to align against the Republic. They say Dooku is just a political idealist. He is a political idealist. Shut up, I'm talking. I think the Count Dooku is behind it. Oh, hold on, little lady. You don't know what you're talking about. You know, my lady, Count Dooku was once a Jedi. He couldn't assassinate anyone. It's not in his character. So shut your mouth, little girl. You don't know what you're talking about. So just shut your face. But seriously, Yoda's glad you're okay. Seeing you alive brings warm feelings to my heart. I'll get back in the kitchen. Also, let's not forget that nasty business with Darth Maul a couple years back. Business which apparently no one bothered to follow up on. You know, come to think of it, if the Jedi had just sent one, or two, or three, or, or four, or five, or six, or, or seven Jedis back with them to Naboo, they might have actually captured Darth Maul and figured out who he was working for. Can you imagine the look on his face when he opened the door and is all like, I'm a fucking badass, and then, and then he's like, oh, um. How do you close these doors? Is, this, is it this button? Okay, there it goes. Oh god. Why am I even talking about this movie still? Someone help me. You know, they make a magic potion that makes you forget about the Phantom Menace when you drink it. It's called Bleach. Number four, love and marriage. So let's just get right into this. It's been like 10 years since Anakin has seen Padme. And while he was a Jedi in training and she was active in politics, they never once bumped into each other. So he knows he's gonna go talk to her now and he's suddenly really excited. Who wouldn't be? What red-blooded male wouldn't want to dock his canoe in Natalie's port, man? Now all joking aside, why aren't the Jedis allowed to love? Because we're told they're not allowed to. But it's never really explained. Does anyone get like a creepy vibe from these movies? I guess it's got something to do with, like, purging emotions to avoid being tempted by the dark side, right? But it will be one, you know, he smiles, he laughs, <laughs> he gets annoyed. What? Well, you've lost him. He enjoys a good sarcastic quip. Oh, this is going to be easy. I mean, the Jedis aren't supposed to be Vulcans, right? Even Vulcans took wives and had sex. So really, the only thing that made Obi-Wan different from like a normal person was that he didn't express any interest in chicks. I was beginning to wonder if you'd got my message. Lack of sex can drive men crazy, you know. So when they find out that you got a high midichlorian count in your bloodstream, I guess your parents give you to the Jedi as a baby to be trained in this creepy cult-like environment, and you lose all your free will. I guess those parents don't have any emotional attachment to their children either. You see, none of those kids made a personal commitment to follow this rigid lifestyle. You can't make those kind of decisions when you're two. So unless Yoda injected each Jedi with some kind of serum that makes you not interested in the opposite sex, you'd think the Jedi would have major problems when they all hit puberty. So then Amidala finally sees Anakin again, and for no reason, she's not allowed to love either. We can't. It's just not possible. What the fuck? She's just a senator, why can't she fucking date a guy? I'm a senator. For Christ's sake. Parents don't love their kids, men don't love women, Mace is unmarried, Palpatine don't got a wife. In fact, the only person in the galaxy who's married is Jimmy Smits. My wife and I will take the girl. Why is he in this movie? They should have just put Paul Blart Mall Cop in the movie. I mean, why not? Look, I've been through a divorce too, and I had some pretty bad relationships. But really, this is getting kind of creepy, don't you think? 
they do decide to give in to their emotions and ultimately they will suffer all the consequences of that. And you don't gotta be a sex therapist to figure out what this represents. Now you can see why people hate these fucking movies. Cause the people in them act like weird space aliens and not people. Now technically they are weird space aliens. But we can't relate to their fucking weird, sterile, sexless universe. They seem as cold and lifeless and boring as the computer-generated world they're projected against. Simple, real, genuine moments like this have been replaced by this. Eventually, though, we are forced to endure the most bizarre, loveless, awkward, and forced romance in cinematic history. Send in the clones. So this movie's called Attack of the Clones, so I guess we should talk about that shit. And what can laughingly be called the plot. So Count Dooku has bugs make robots so that the Republic gets scared and then wants to make clones to fight the robots that the bugs made. But the clones are already being made before the robots are being made by the bugs. If you're confused, don't be ashamed. Even the writer of the film doesn't understand it. So I guess Palpatine's got Doku talking to evil star systems into joining them, including ones led by Count Chocula, Rosie the Robot, and another racist cartoon. So let's talk about what makes no sense. If the Galactic Republic is made up of a thousand worlds, then why can't they scrounge up a volunteer army to defend them against the robots? For no reason, a fat, racist cartoon knows about Kamino and the fact that they make clones there. But no one else seems to know about this planet or ever heard of it. Even Yoda, who's been alive for 800 years. So Obi-Wan finds the planet where the dart came from, and it belongs to a bounty hunter named Boba Fett who's hanging out there. He's the guy who's trying to kill Padme. Padme is the chief senator opposed to the Military Creation Act. There aren't any connections yet. Palpatine's behind it all. Then Obi-Wan sees all the clones, and discovers that the order to make them was placed under suspicious circumstances. This was like 10 years ago, and the exact same time that Palpatine was elected Chancellor. Palpatine's behind it all. So Obi-Wan sends him a message and tells him about the clones. But Mace Idiot still thinks they're looking for Padme's assassin. Do you think these cloners are involved in the plot to assassinate Senator Amidala? I think this discovery of the clone army is a little more important than who's trying to kill stupid Padme. Palpatine's behind it all. Do not assume anything, Obi-Wan. Hey. Clearly, your mind must be. Hey, Did the idiots. Council ever authorize the creation of a clone army? No. Only the Dark Lord of the Sith knows of our weakness. You don't have to tell him about your diminished use of the Force. Just tell him that Obi-Wan found that clones are suspiciously being made already. And if you think that a Sith is pulling strings in the Senate, just order blood tests done on everyone. What do I mean by that? Well, in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, if they thought somebody was a shapeshifter, they cut open their hand and drip out some blood. And if it didn't change into the shapeshifter, then you were a real person. And it's been established that you can count midichlorians in someone's blood to see how much force they got in them. They find a lot of midichlorians in palpitations.